Good morning, I'm out here in Hell's Canyon and I'm gonna stop for a moment and talk to you about an anime, Xenosaga. Xenosaga is a new anime release from ADV Films. It's a sprawling space opera based on a video game. It has lots of battles, both in space and in mecha, and it's got cute girls, androids, and a really confusing plot that might be clearer to me if I'd known something about the video game. We start out in the spaceship Waglinda, which has several objects of interest. First of all, it's holding the Zohar, a huge golden monolithic thing that seems to be the MacGuffin that everybody wants. Zohar. The other thing of interest in this big spaceship is Cosmos, a android robot weapon in the shape of a female. Shion is the chief scientist in charge of the Cosmos project. She's cute as a button. She's also fond of talking with the Realians, who are biologically engineered creatures, who she thinks of as pretty much human. And in this scene, we see her giving one of the Realians, who will come up later, a cell phone strap. I'm a mass-produced antinosis Realian chief engineer. Hmm? <laughs> you like Bunny? Mm-hmm. Well... I guess that makes two of us, then. Here, but... Then... Don't worry about it. I'll still have this one. Thousands of years in the future and we still have cell phone straps? <laughs> Lieutenant Virgil of the Space Marine sees things a little differently. He thinks the Realians are just property and he doesn't really care much for them. Yeah, that's a sweet theory. But you really think we can count on these things in a fight? Um... Excuse me, but you should know by now that these people are highly skilled fighters. These people? Don't tell me you're treating equipment like people now. The big bad guys attacking with a huge alien space fleet are the Gnosis, and they apparently want this Zohar thing for themselves. In the course of the battle, which enters the space station rather quickly, Xion and Lieutenant Virgil are going to have their lots thrown together. Sir, I'm picking up something. We better go. Uh, okay. After the attack, Shion and Lieutenant Virgil are going to find themselves with Captain Matthews on a salvage boat. Back on the home planet, the organization called Vector, which apparently Shion works for, has other plans for Cosmos. You are Vector CEO, sir. Cosmos is programmed to give any order you send out her highest priority. Even her chief developer is unaware of this fact, nor would she know how to override it. We've got this white-haired guy who showed up at the beginning and went off with a cell phone strap and the realian it was attached to. This kid, who's called affectionately Little Master, or just Junior for short, runs an entire space fleet and a foundation. He's got a collection of something called Zohar emulators that is really impressive and you could throw a state dinner with it, but since we don't know what a Zohar does, I'm not terribly impressed by the emulators. Then we've got Momo. She's a cute prototype for a Realian tactical computer series. And why people are interested in her specifically, we don't know terribly much either. In addition, we're going to meet an android named Ziggy, who works for an organization called Ziggurat. And we're going to have pursuit by a spaceship from an organization called Utic. There's a lot of very fast-paced action in this series. The plot moves along pretty quickly. Between Vector and Udic and Gnosis and Ziggurat, I'm a little confused as to who all these people are, and for some reason, nobody will tell us why they're all after this Zohar thing. If you're a fan of the video game, you probably know all this stuff, and you're snickering at the old man who has no idea what all this is about. But as a cold view of this anime without prior knowledge of the video game, I was a little confused by all the different organizations and people popping up chasing after Xion, Cosmos, or the Zohar. Okay, I realize a few enigmas and mysteries are good for a story, but I don't think that's the case here. Even by the time we get to the end of the entire 13 episodes, we still don't understand half of what's gone on. I think it's just a case of bad storytelling. I realize that putting too much exposition in the front of a story bogs things down, but that's why good writers are good writers, because they can tell you what you need to know to understand the story and the characters without slowing things down to a crawl. 
Overall, the best I can do for this series is give it two stars. It's got adequate animation, but the story was a complete muddle and the characters never attached themselves to me beyond their big, wide eyes. I suppose if you're a fan of the video game, you may find it more interesting. However, I doubt it. Thanks for listening.